Finally, some innovations when we're talking about CPU tower coolers, because let's be honest, we haven't seen anything different for the past couple of years or maybe even more, I would say 10 years or something like that. So it's not that you'll be getting some varieties of locking mechanisms or placing the CPU passive heatsink on the CPU and on the motherboard. It's just that part where you're placing the fans on that heatsink that kind of, you know, you have those two hinges on each fan and they're kind of, I don't know, sloppy, I would say. But we we're used to that and we couldn't find anything other than that, other solutions when we're talking about, in general, uh, placing the fans on the passive heatsink. Today we have something different. Today Arctic releases their new CPU tower cooler called Freezer 36. You have it in varieties of colors and of course uh, non-RGB and addressable RGB with two P12 PWM PST fans. And it's right here. Uh, this is quite cool. Basically after the Liquid Freezer 3 we have some refreshment in the, the CPU tower cooler department and I'm really loving this one just because it's really easy to mount it. So before I go into specs, I'm going to go and detail you with some information where we're talking about mounting it inside your PC. So how does it start? It's fairly simple. If you decide to mount it on your AM5 or AM4 socket, uh, you can simply just uh, remove the plastic uh, retention brackets that originally come with the motherboard, place uh, four plastic standoffs and you have two retention steel retention brackets that need to be tied up with four screws. So it's simple as that. After that, you have to remove the plastic foil from the copper plate. You have to apply MX6 thermal compound and uh, tie up two screws. Now, what's the cool part? You have those two retention brackets that hold each fan, right? And uh, it's quite interesting that they actually ditched those. To be honest, when I was unboxing the cooler, I was actually looking for those and I was quite, you know, surprised that they weren't there. And at some point I actually thought that they were missing. So you have on each fan, you have four screws that are differently designed and what happens next so you place the tower cooler on your cpu everything is locked in place you're done that's it you only need to place the fans so you just push the fans inside or place them inside and just pop them inside it's like using those pegs for the side panels of the case you just pop them inside that's it connect addressable rgb and pwm headers together daisy chain them because they are pwm pst and addressable rgb connect them to your motherboard you're good to go there is no hustle when we're talking about those uh, hinges and trying to attach them at the bottom part where it's really close to the gpu or at the top part where it's close to the top fans or anything similar to that it's really straightforward and this is why i'm loving this cooler because we have something new we have something new this is the most important thing now let's check out the specs uh, supports uh, lga 1700 and am5 and am4 comes with mx6 thermal compound uh, we have single tower heat pipe uh, heat sink with aluminium fins when we're talking about the heat pipes we have four of those six millimeter diameter direct touch heat pipes and uh, when we're talking about the fins 59 times 0.4 millimeter aluminium ones dimension is 126 times 104 times 159 and the whole weight is 917 grams now for the fans we have two p12 pwm pst addressable rgb in this scenario where i have this one they are black standard dimensions 120 120 25 fan speed goes from 200 to 2000 rpms and of course we have zero rpm below five percent pwm fluid dynamic bearing, 4-pin PWM connector and 4-pin socket for daisy chainable possibilities. The cable length is 200 millimeters fan cable plus 80 millimeter PST. And for the addressable RGB, we have 12 LEDs, 3-pin 5 volts addressable RGB header and you can daisy chain it uh, with the other one. Inside the box, you get the Freezer 36 heatsink, 2 P12 fans, uh, Intel LGA 1700 mounting set, AMD mounting set, MX6 and the logo sticker if you decide to mount it at the, to stick it at the back of the rear fan. That's it. That's it. The specs say everything and uh, the mounting mechanism is quite straightforward. I'm really impressed. 
Now, sorry for using a white case for a black Arctic Freezer 36, but I had a scenario here where I could actually do some comparison and I know you guys appreciate those. So in this case, if you remember the NX416L, I used the Symphony 360 addressable RGB here at the top, cooling the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. And I decided why not compare it with a 360. I know it's a bit far-fetched in those terms, but uh, why not? Let's check the benchmarks. So here we go with the Ada64 Extreme Edition, uh, Arctic Freezer 36 addressable RGB black, CPU goes up to 86 and comparing it to 360 radiator, the CPU in that scenario goes up to 80 degrees. But what's fascinating enough is that the clock speed at the same configuration goes up to 5450 megahertz which comes to a point that you get six degrees higher temperatures with the freezer uh, compared to a 360 radiator, which is outstanding, I would say. And the GPU stays the same 54. But let's go with the Cinebench. So Cinebench score and what I noticed, and this is quite outstanding and uh, astonishing uh, at the same time, we have thermals, 87 degrees throughout whole 10 tests. And usually there's an average, it goes, 86 87 88 here it's somehow a processor got locked at 87 and that goes as well for the clock speed so 5275 megahertz when we compare it to a 360 we had 81 degrees throughout the whole test and 5350 megahertz on average when we're talking about thermals and clock speed so again we have six degrees difference and 75 megahertz difference when we're talking about the clock speed. Now, let's check out the benchmarks. 14,255 on MD Ryzen 5 7600X in Cinebench R23. It eventually touches 14,300 and it kind of goes on average, I would say here, 14,250 altogether. When we compare it with the 360, uh, we have somewhat an average at 14,610, 20, something like that. So what I could say is that 400, I think 400, 400, 350 Cinebench points difference compared to uh, the Symphony 360 and uh, the Freezer 36. Now, this is quite cool because you don't get that much performance drop. And when we're talking about the thermals, don't take AMD thermals into consideration when we're talking about the high temperatures because this is how they work. They push the maximum and they try to perform as that. They can't go above those thermals. So what I can say is that quite interesting results when we compare the Freezer 36 to an actual 360 AIO. Of course, we have varieties of 360 AIOs where some would most likely perform much better uh, pushing the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X even up to 16,000 Cinebench points. So there's loads of difference. And of course, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 did an outstanding job. And I bet the uh, Arctic Liquid Freezer uh, 3 360 also does an outstanding job on the 7600X. But I wanted to give you some slight comparison so you know what you can expect if you decide to ditch water cooling and go with air cooling because after all pit walls are quite quiet and it looks quite nice, I do have to say. The only addressable RGB are the fans. This is nicely designed and what can i say now the cool thing and what arctic did with liquid freezer 3 and the launch with the discounts they're doing the same thing with this one so check this out prices are outstanding so arctic freezer 36 is 19.13 euros on the web shop freezer 36 ceo is 20.64 euros uh, 36 black we have 20.51 and you have black and white addressable rgb as well version which goes up to maximum 25.96 euros on amazon is 26.17 and you get anniversary shipping within europe for 5.99 euros as well so this promotion ends 5th of june 2024 and getting such a good cooler and i think it could even beat without a doubt the hyper 212 halo black and for this price i think this is definitely the best buy in i would say some sort of a low to mid range category when we're talking about the amount of heat pipes the size of the heat sink the fans are well we can't discuss the fans because they're one of one of the best without a doubt so it's going to be a bit difficult i think this will be the first 
if not one of five products that I reviewed so far on my entire channel that will get three badges. And the reason for these three badges, first of all, Best Buy, without a doubt, the price is remarkably the lowest that you can find for any cooler that performs this good. Then we have Creative Badge. I haven't seen, or I might have missed, but so far, concerning all reviews, I haven't seen a CPU tower cooler with this type of mechanism. You had like slide in, you had those hinges, you had, I don't know, varieties of other stuff uh, uh, concerning the mounting mechanism of the fans, but I haven't seen this with some sort of a pegs, I would say, right? So this is for the creative part. And of course, finally, PC Crazy approved badge because why not? I definitely approve this CPU tower cooler and definitely recommend it if you're going somewhere around I would even say up to 7700X when we're talking about the AMD platform without a doubt. So guys for all the Arctic Freezer 36 versions I'll place the links in the description so you can check them out if you don't want to go and buy them through Amazon since I'm going to link that through my Amazon affiliate you can go to Arctic uh, website and check them out there you know the shipping rates and everything until first week of June, you have this uh, insane discount, which is just wow. So guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you're new to the channel and if this video meant something to you or it helped you decide which CPU tower cooler to go with, you can definitely leave a subscribe, like and uh, click the notification bell for future content. And hopefully I will see you there in that future content. Thanks for watching. See you very soon. Bye bye.